Hello and welcome to Red Robin Heritage Cast number 23. For this edition, I'm delighted to be joined by someone who made 306 top flight appearances across the NRL, Super League and International Rugby League. An NRL Grand Final winner who played 110 times in the famous red and white of Hull Kingston Rovers. One of the finest players to grace the Robins' left edge and a former Super League dream teamer. Cain Lynette, welcome to the Red Robin Heritage Cast. Thanks for having me. No, it's great, Cain. Uh, really delighted to be able to have you on the uh, Heritage Cast, of course. Um, what, five years at the Robins? I mean, d- does it feel like five years or does it feel like it's flown by? Oh, it definitely feels like it's flown by. I'd probably say about half that time. Um, yeah, it's you know been a great time. Um, did my little ones and that growing up here, and yeah, the time's just flown. Yeah, and of course, Ken, you, you announced your retirement um, not that long ago. The fixtures are out. The boys will be back in pre-season very shortly. Um, are you um, are you pining to get back in for another pre-season? Or are you quite happy now to be to be on the on the sidelines? No, I'm definitely quite happy to be on the sidelines. Um, yeah, obviously. Um, I've got a fair bit going on back home and stuff, but um, yeah, I wasn't um, happy. I'm not happy to do another preseason in the cold weather. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cold. Um, yeah, you can vouch for that. Ken, um, we'll talk about your plans for after rugby league later, and, and obviously your time with the Robins uh, a bit later on. But but how did you get into rugby league in the first place? Because I'm, I'm sure I heard that we could have lost you to rugby union. Was it was you very close to maybe? Going to the other code as well when you was uh, younger and playing rugby. Yeah, there was a yeah one stage. I started rugby league when I was uh, six years old. Um, just went down there with a few friends after school, and um, yeah, loved the game. Um, my dad played um, a pretty high level at rugby league, so um, yeah, I played a bit of uh, league on the Saturday and union on the Sunday, and um, yeah, played in a lot of rep teams growing up. And um, yeah, I was probably actually better at rugby union, but I just uh, felt like I enjoyed rugby league more, so yeah, went with that. Yeah, fantastic. You made your Sydney debut back in 2010. How did you get to that point where you was lining up in the NRL? Um, so I played under-20s at St. George Illawarra Dragons and, um, yeah, I played some pretty good footy there for a couple of years and I played uh, joined the NRL squad at the Dragons under Wayne Bennett um, in 2010 and then they let me go. And, um, yeah, went to the Roosters and worked really hard and, um, yeah, got my opportunity to play NRL. How old was you when you made it? What, you'd have been 20... One, so I just come out of the under 20s squad, and yeah, um, it's at the Roosters, and um, there's quite a few young people, uh, young players make their debut that year, and um, I was lucky enough to get my chance. Yeah, and then, I mean, you're making your debut for one of the biggest sides, and what what a debut it was as well, <laughs> scoring a try. And who would have thought you was lining up against some future Robin, uh, lining up with some future Robins as well, Mossy Masoy, Todd Carney, and of course Sean Kenny Dowell. Uh, lining up in that side um, on your debut. What I mean, do you, can you remember your debut? Can you remember the try? Yeah, I'll never forget my debut. Um, I was actually supposed to make my debut, I think it was about eight weeks beforehand, but I uh, rolled my ankle really bad at training. And so I had to, I had about a month off and then had to work my way to get another opportunity. And um, yeah, we played Melbourne Storm down there. And um, yeah, it was just special. I had a really good game and I think I made over 200 metres and scored a try. And yeah, we had a really good win. So um, yeah, I, was, I remember being really nervous and I remember uh, calling my parents up and them crying and um yeah just obviously a lot of hard work and to finally you know I always dreamt about playing in the NRO and to get that opportunity was pretty special yeah and he was with the Roosters for two years and a grand final appearance as well I mean things were quickly snowballing for you yeah I know exactly I don't know it was that first year I made my debut I actually um we made the grand final with Skidzy and um, Mossy and yeah to play the grand final the first year I think I'd only played 10 games it was um yeah it all moved really quickly yeah, I wonder when you um, when you started out playing rugby league as a kid, whether was this what you dreamed of? I mean, and then to be able to do it so relatively early in your career as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, I was obviously I was actually a Roosters fan growing up. My favourite yeah. player, was there and um, yeah, I was a massive Roosters supporter. So to get my opportunity there was uh, pretty awesome. And um, yeah, to play a grand final um, in the first year, I, I probably uh, took it a bit for granted. To be honest, uh, I thought it was. Yeah, probably too easy. And then, obviously, a lot of players go through their career, um, their whole career, and not even playing in a grand final. So, um, you look at that back now and I uh, guess how lucky you were. Yeah, I suppose, though, being, being young and, and still quite early in your career, I suppose, maybe that gives you a bit more confidence because you have a bit, you know, you, you don't have the baggage of of knowing what's gone before and, and, and you're fresh, you're going into it as, you know, open eyes, ready to accept anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. 
Yeah, I mean, if you look back at um, Skids here, of course, you know, we've known what he's done for the Robins in terms of his captaincy, his leadership. Did you see early early signs then of any leadership qualities? Uh, oh, I guess we were just really young back then. Yeah, um, yeah young and stupid. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah, obviously, Skids, he's always been, like, a really good player. Um, I, even when he was such a young age, um, you know, everyone was talking about him. And, you know, he developed quite young. I think he, he might have made his debut at 19 or something. Um, yeah, he was obviously always a really special player, and um, yeah, I'm just happy that I've got to play alongside him, and you know, I've uh, got to see the person he's become further down the track. Yeah, you got a move to the Cowboys, North Queensland, 2012. How did that come about? Um, so I played a couple of years at the Roosters, and I had a few injuries that second year, and I didn't really have the best year. And um, I knew the Cowboys; they, um, I had a couple of teams come knocking on the door, and um, just the opportunity to go to the Cowboys to play outside of Jonathan Thurston and. Uh, Matty Bowen was there and, um, yeah, Willie Tonga, the left centre at that stage, he um, was coming over to Super League, I think. So it was just a really good opportunity and, um, yeah, I jumped at it straight away and, um, yeah, uh, lucky enough, I, I made the move up north. Yeah, I was going to say, how was the transition from, from Sydney to Townsville? Oh, it was really hard, um, just the heat and doing the pre-season. Um, yeah, I just remember it was a lot of hard work, but um, that hard work definitely paid off. Yeah, and what stands out about your time with the Cowboys is your your consistency, the number of appearances that you made, you know, each season, and of course you finally uh, got a grand final winners um, trophy. Of course, it was a defeat as well, but that that grand final victory, golden point, it, that must have been you know almost utopia for you to you know after tasting defeat previously with Sydney um, and then to to finally win it and. Um, you know, a remarkable career with the Cowboys, but that grand final win must have been, you know, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was special. It was um, obviously a derby game with Brisbane as well. And um, I just think, obviously, um, that was the first and only premiership at the Cowboys. And um, it was a big community town, like a little bit like Hull, um, the mm-hmm. fan. One just appreciates rugby league. And um, to bring that trophy back to North Queensland, um, yeah, it was something that I guess I'll never forget. Yeah, what do you put your consistency down to? I mean, did you, I guess you didn't suffer too many injuries during your time with the Cowboys. Yeah, obviously you have injuries and, you know, you've got to push through that. Um, you need that to have that push through the pain level. And there was a lot of games where I probably shouldn't have been out there, but um, I just pushed through it. But yeah, I, I guess it's like the preparation and, um, you know, looking after yourself after the games and um, obviously having a bit of luck too. So it's probably a combination of a few things. Yeah, and it was during that time with the Cowboys you got your first taste of Craven Park when you linked up with Scotland for the for the Four Nations series. Um, Scottish heritage, I think. Is it your mum who's Scottish? Yeah, mum. Yeah, she was born up there in Glasgow. Yeah, so it must have been. Um, you must have been very proud to be able to to come over and represent Scotland. When was your first game for Scotland? Uh twenty thirteen. Oh wow. Okay, so you played earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was awesome. Um, we had like really a, a really strong team, and um, I think we made it to the quarterfinals. Um, but yeah, it was just such a great experience. Um, it was probably something that I was really passionate about, and my family as well. Um, they were all following, and um, yeah, it was definitely an awesome experience. Yeah, and then you played Australia, of course, at Craven Park. Was that the first time that you'd been over to the UK, or you'd been previously, obviously, with your mum being from Scotland? No, that was the first time I'd obviously uh, played in over here and uh, come to the UK. And I remember that game against Australia. It was a tough night. Uh, yeah. Obviously a special team. And Yeah, I was at that game and it was, um, the weather conditions wasn't great, was it? I mean, it was a cold cold and windy night at Craven Park. Yeah, it was freezing. Obviously, further down the track, I played in a lot more of those. <laughs> I mean, just on that Four Nations as well, when you, you picked up the draw against New Zealand, um, I mean, famous result for Scotland. Um, that must that must be a special moment for you to to hold a team like the New Zealand side to to a draw. Yeah, that was awesome, and um, yeah, we like I said, we had a really strong team, and um, there was a lot of people behind the scenes then that I think really added to it. Um, you know, Steve McCormack, and um, yeah, and in that World Cup as well, the first one we also beat Tonga up there. Uh, I think it was Workington, and that was um, yeah, that was a massive like occasion for Scotland and. Um, you know, we probably fell back a little bit the last couple of years, but, um, you know, hopefully down the track they can rebuild again. Yeah, and you was playing alongside um, fellow Cowboy um, and future Robin Lachlan Coote. I mean, you must have struck, struck up a tremendous friendship with Coote over, over the years and, and then to be lining up alongside and playing for Scotland as well must have been special. 
Yeah, it was. And, um, yeah, I guess he's just a good person and, uh, you know, he's an ultimate professional and I think he's been, you know, a big part of uh, whole KO. He obviously didn't get to play a lot of games, but, you know, his leadership and professionalism, I think it's, um, you know, paid off in a lot of those other young uh, kids coming through. And, you know, I think that's what he, uh, you know, brings to the team. Yeah, and it's sad to see him sort of retire early due to to injury and not through his own choice. So I, I guess it's it's sad in in any professional sport, isn't it, where a player's got to retire through through injury and not because they they're just ready to to retire. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, like rugby league's only you know a small part of your life. Um, you know he's got a, a big future ahead of him, and he's got a beautiful family, and um, you know his health uh, comes first. And you know he was lucky to have a really good career and. Um, you know, played at the top level for a long time. So, you know, I'm sure he's got no regrets. Yeah, I mean, fantastic career with the Cowboys. Uh, consistency throughout. And then obviously 2018, uh, your final season with the Cowboys. And then what happens there? You know, the move over to Hulkington Rovers, how did that come about? Was the interest for you to stay in the NRL or, or was you desperate to challenge yourself somewhere else? I definitely felt it was the right time um, to come over to the league. I uh, always wanted to come over to England at the back end of my career. And, um, yeah, I, I was talking to a couple of clubs. I knew David Ferner from the Cowboys pretty well. And um, so I was pretty close to going to Leeds, but um, ultimately decided to come to KR. And, yeah, I'm really happy that I did. And, yeah, love my time here. Yeah, definitely. And, and just sticking with the Cowboys, I mean, I can't speak to you without speaking about the great man, Johnny Fairston. I mean, to line up alongside him on so many occasions and, and see him um, do what he does and, and be on the receiving end of some of his plays, it's, he's a very special talent and one who's going to go down in, in history as one of the best. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, I guess you look back at it when you're in that moment, you, you probably take things a little bit for granted, but then you look back and you realise like, the type of players you've played with and mm. the coach, once you retire, it's um, yeah, very lucky and... Uh, to play outside of him, he was just the ultimate competitor. Like he was just everywhere, and you know, training and everything he does in the community as well for the indigenous. Mm. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, fantastic player. So Tim Sheens brings you over to Hulkington Rovers. Um, when you first got here, what what was the expectations for you? Because obviously the Robins had just been uh, relegated, got themselves back into Super League. What was your what was the expectations and you and what was you hoping for? Um, I knew that the club was, you know, down at the bottom of the Super League, but I guess it was just to um, keep improving and, you know, help the club get to, you know, a level where um, we consistently compete week in, week out. But um, I, I guess when I first come here, I didn't realise it's probably, it, was, it wasn't it was in the best shape, I don't think, and uh, just the professionalism and um, just the facilities and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, look, looking like back then to now, um, how far it's come, um it's really good. Yeah, and I think that's why, um, I mean, especially for you, Kane, you're held in such high esteem by Robin supporters because you've been part of that transition. You've, you've seen where we've come from and, and where we are now in such a relatively short space of time. Um, when you came over, was you was you always going to play centre or, or was you being earmarked for the second row spot? Um, I'd been earmarked for the second row spot. I signed as a second row. I think Shanezy wanted me to play there. Um but it just took a little bit of transitioning. Um, I hadn't played much back row at all through my career, so um, I felt a lot more comfortable in the centres. Um, and I think that's where I played the first year or two and then obviously transitioned into the back row once uh, Tony Smith um, came. And, yeah, we worked on it at the pre-season and I felt like um, I developed my game a lot and um, really enjoyed it. Yeah, did you have to do anything physically? Did you have to put more weight on? Did you have to bulk up in certain areas of your body? Did that change for you? Um, oh, not really. Probably just the fitness level is like getting used to, um, you know, at centre you can just kind of switch off a bit in defence and have a break. But in the back row, you got to work a lot more. And um, just the pre-season, that did a lot of work. And I guess after doing that work in pre-season, you just feel a lot more comfortable. And, um, you know, it suited my game as well, running good lines and stuff. So, And I'm big enough and strong enough to handle it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I mean, you made your debut in uh, Ultimate Baptism of Fire, the whole derby. Um, Jimmy Case scoring that special try. Yeah, um, yeah, it was, it was an eye-opener. I guess I didn't really know what I was walking into. Um, I heard the fans and everyone talking about the derby game. And, um, yeah, obviously when I turned up to the ground and it was snowing and it was freezing cold and then to see the fans and the atmosphere, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I bet it'd been the first time you played with an orange ball as well. Yeah, I didn't even. Yeah, 
But I was, yeah, I was like, what's this? Yeah. I suppose there are moments, I mean, it's a bit like in, in, in football, isn't it, when you score a last-minute goal to score a last-minute try? Um, no matter what, how you've played, to, to get that winning feeling and to do it in a derby as well. Um, and, and I remember that game, the crowd were absolutely electric. It, you know, the euphoria around it. Um, and for it to be the first game of the season, I suppose if you could bottle that up and, and bring that into every game, um, well, you'd be more than a millionaire, wouldn't you, if you could sell that on. But um, for, for you, for, for your first game, you know, what an experience that must have been for you. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Like I said, um, just the crowd and, um, yeah, I just, I guess I didn't realise how loud the, like, the English crowd would be. Like, I've been involved in some massive games in Australia, but, yeah, the derby games are um, something special and, like, you can have, like, 30,000 in a derby game and it feels like when you're back in Australia with 100,000 people there, if not more, in the derby. Yeah, I mean, on the derby, I think you've played in 10, won five, lost five. The, pre- the preparation for derbies, have you, ex- I suppose, each time you've played, because under different coaches, etc., you, you've had different preparation. You've, I suppose you've had some coaches all build it up to make it the biggest game in the world. You've had some coaches who probably played it down. What what works for you? Uh, probably playing it down, to be honest. Um, yeah, sometimes you can get carried away with all the build-up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I guess it's yeah all different. I didn't know it's five and five, but, um, yeah, each game's been uh, pretty special to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, we'll fast forward. There's a few, a few uh, derbies um, that you played in this season. We saw the 14 nil at their place uh, last season. We saw the the Good Friday victory with Cooty running away to score that try, and then we saw the the last game of the season when the patched up Robins managed to turn them over. Um, what was it 36 points to four? Um, I spoke to Ethan Ryan on the previous Heritage Cast, and and um, I think he was bust up with a broken thumb during the game and. I mean, that really was a patched up side and, and to come away with a victory and not just a victory, but the manner of the performance and the on the scoreline was, I mean, we were all just pinching ourselves that, you know, a, a team that couldn't name a full squad as well of, of players were able to come away with a victory like that. I suppose that must have been a special kind of victory as well. It's not necessarily one way you get a trophy or, or anything like that, but but to know that a group of blokes have managed to put put that effort and, and come away with something. Yeah, that was special. Um... I remember Magsy, I think, took over was it, a couple of weeks beforehand. And then, um, yeah, we had hardly any players. I think we, I think only 14 players might have played that game because we had a couple of young yeah. kids. Um, yeah, I just remember it was the last game of the year. And, yeah, all the boys, we just ripped in for each other. And I think we said if we have a good performance today, we'll all we'll have a couple of beers after the game. And um, I remember it was our last game of the season, so it was a good way to finish up. Yeah, I mean, those players playing out of position all over the place. I mean, you saw Vete, probably his best game in a in a Rover shirt. He absolutely ran his his um, blood to water. But um, during the derbies, one of the things that always interested me is that it's on the pitch you see some rivalries, you see some big hits, you see players not liking each other. Was there any other times where, where you can targeted anyone or, or tried to get in the rear? Or, or did you genuinely not get on with some of the players? Oh, obviously, Derby brings a bit more aggression out of a few people, and you know, I guess you you wear your heart on your sleeve. And you know, I, I think I play my best footy when I play aggressive and uh, niggle the other players. But, but yeah, probably playing against Jake Connor, he used to get under his <laughs> little boys, and it'd be one player that I'd always want to give a bit back to. Yeah, I think uh, Ethan Ryan said that. Uh, I think Jake had been given a bit of needle during that game, and. Well, he rightly had it served back to him, didn't he? Because I don't think you, you saw anything from him during that game. And I think Minicella, I think he got under his skin as well. Yeah, it's good. I think that's what the fans want to see as well. And as players, you know, it's I think it just adds to the extra competitiveness of the game. And, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I suppose it's so hard, though, to keep a lid on that as well, isn't it? And not get carried away with the emotion. So to keep the ice cold, you know, ruthlessness when you need to and, and, and be able to still execute your game plan but do it at a, an aggressive and a high tempo. I mean, there will be times, isn't there, where you do run away with yourself because, you, you know, your human emotions, run, you know, run high. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think that's the best teams, you know, and when you have your best performances, I think that's, you know, you've got to find that right, the balance, um, you know, not to go too over the top with everything. Yeah. Go back to your time when you did sign for the Robins. I think it was a free year contract. Was your plan always to see out that contract and then maybe – Move back to an RL, or, or was you planning on on a longer term stay in the UK? Um, I was never planning on going back to the NRL. Once I come over here, I knew I wasn't. I just wanted to finish my career over here. But um, to be honest, I probably didn't even know I'd um, see out the whole three years here. Um, mm. 
I guess, you know, it's a big move away from Australia, a long way from home. And, you know, I signed that long-term deal. But, yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd spend the whole time here. But I guess I just fell in love with the club and the people and um, the country. And, um, yeah, so I ended up doing five years. So, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, I suppose, I mean, how important was it to you and, and, and your partner to, to be able to settle into the UK and, and be almost welcome to the club and the community and, and, and feel at ease here? Because there's many uh, players who've come over uh, from the NRL who, who haven't settled for, for whatever reason and they've either, you know, left the contracts early or seen out but then gone straight back home. I guess, you know, like you said, being welcomed and being able to settle into the areas is ultimately why you've stayed for so long. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing, getting the family settled, um, the kids, um, you know, starting school. And, you know, if they're settled and they're happy, it makes it a lot easier to do my job and, you know, do my job as best as possible. So, um, you know, I think that definitely helped me, uh, you know, spend this long amount of time here. And, um, you know, I feel like I've always been pretty loyal through my career. So um, to spend that amount of time at the one club and to see how far uh, the club has come, you um, you know, and for me to be a big part of that, um, you know, it's something that I hold really close to my heart. Yeah. Uh, we saw the departure of Tim Sheens and then Tony Smith come into the club. And, and for me, I mean, supporters are probably still a bit divided on Tony Smith. For me, he's one of the, the catalysts to change. I thought his appointment and, and some of the things that he did, especially in just lifting people's maybe expectations and, and, and bringing a, a bit more professionalism to the club. And, and I just felt when Tony Smith came into the club, that we started to elevate and, and things started to get a little bit more serious. And, and you already mentioned like training facilities and things like that. There seems to be changes on the field and off it as well. And I'm, I'm guessing, Kane, I don't know, did the players feel like Tony, when Tony came in, things changed and noticeably changed? Yeah, 100%. I agree. Um, Tony was massive for the club. Um, I've got nothing but respect from him. And, um, you know, he had to make some big changes and, you know, some changes that might not have looked the best for him, but um, he made them and I think the club, uh, they've come a long way since he's been here and um, I love playing under Tony Smith and um, yeah, just uh, yeah, just seeing how much he helped the club and, you know, I think, and then Willie coming in this year on top of what Tony did, um, yeah, he's walked into a team that has been really uh, built by Tony and, um, and then Willie's just added to that as well. Yeah, 2020, what funny, funny season, COVID hit. Um, I mean, it must have been difficult for you, not only um, the restrictions on how you could live your life, but also being in a, in a foreign country and, and not necessarily being close to your, to your family who were thousands of miles away. Of course, professionally, things changed on the pitch and, and the way that you was, had to train, to play, not playing in front of spectators for so long. Um, what was that time like for you? Oh, it was just weird. Like, you look back at it now and you kind of forget about it a little bit, but then you look back. Just, yeah, how much things had changed. But um, to be honest, it was pretty good. I got to st uh, have a lot of family time and, um, you know, I never get that time back. And um, I did a fair bit of training and stuff by myself. And I think I actually, when we come back and play it, I played some pretty good footy. So, but I think like not playing in front of the fans and that, it was just weird, like trying to create your own atmosphere and stuff. So, um, and the warm ups and stuff like that, it was, yeah, it was just a real strange time. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got two young boys, and and the family time, you know, like you say, when you look back, it was a a special time for a lot of reasons. It was a tough time for the amount of people who, who suffered, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and not being able to to live a normal life. But there was there was definitely pluses to it, and and I guess for you, you know, like you said, you was able to spend time with your family. Um, but I suppose there was things that you wouldn't have been able to do that away from the rugby pitch that you'd normally do to unwind or, or relax, and and and. Ironically, though, like you said, you did start playing some of your best your best footy that you you played in your career. So it's weird how things just work out sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And it might have actually been good for me too to just um, you know give the body a bit of a break. Um, but yeah, I think the boys we yeah did a little bit of training and stuff, and then we come back and we're all in pretty good shape. So I think that also showed how much like the club had come, and I think Tony was a big part of that as well. Like the boys wanted to play under him. Yeah, although that it wasn't a great season for the Robins in terms of on the field, was it? Um, I mean, saved from relegation by the virtue of COVID and, and Toronto's expulsion from the league. Um, you'd come from the Cowboys, you'd been used to to doing well in the in the comp and and, and finishing in playoffs, etc. Obviously, you're outside now, which is is struggling at the foot of the table for a couple of seasons. Um, 
with Tony's appointment, did you see a way out? Did you think things would get better? Oh, I knew things would get better, but it just takes time, doesn't it? Like, I'm the type of person who's, um, you know, I'm pretty persistent and, you know, I, I'll keep working hard and uh, do my best. And But, yeah, it's, it was just going to take time. Yeah, definitely. And and we saw what could be what could be achieved the following season, didn't we? Uh, a, a playoff semi-final um, defeat to Catalan after finishing sixth in the table. I mean, a, a, a remarkable season for the Robins considering what had gone before. Um, and it, that was a season that that Robin supporters really did start to get excited about, you know, where this team could go, where the club could go. Um, did it surprise you where the where the team finished? Did you did you expect that at the start of the season, or or did you actually believe that playoffs was was a real possibility? I think I believed it, but um, we had a pretty strong team. But then we had heaps of injuries as well, especially mm. towards. Uh, we probably overachieved a little bit towards the back end because I remember we did have a lot of injuries and. Um, but yeah, the boys, to their credit, we all stuck pretty tight and um, yeah, we've had a good season. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned injuries. Um, yeah, the defeat to Catalan was disappointing in the semi finals, but that victory over Warrington, um, you know, Rovers were not fancied whatsoever to, to come away with a result. And not only come away with a result, we nilled them and, and put a, a very good side to the sword. Uh, another special game for you, Kane. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I look back at that and I think it's probably one of the best. Um, games I've been a part of as part of like how how KR. I think yeah, we had a really strong game that game, and um, we kept them to nil too, and had a good team. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, I, I remember stood on the terrace, and you know, even as supporters, we were probably thinking, you know, yeah. what we've had a decent season. If we go out here, you know, we'll build and, and and go for next season. And then when we got the result, and and it was, you know, that is what sport is. That is the beauty of sport. So have them moments of. Almost when you're not expecting to win, and you do come away with a with a victory. I suppose it was difficult for the players in one respect that you wanted to celebrate that victory, but yet you had Catalan to come and, and a tough journey over there, and 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 being able to savor the moment is, I suppose, sometimes difficult. Came because as professional athletes, it's always about the next game, and, and unless it's the end of the season, you've always got some another one to go to. Yeah, exactly. I think um, I look back at my career now and I think some of those games are the most special. Um, that's what I love playing those games where no one gives you a chance and you're a massive underdog. But, um, you know, you get a group of 17 players and, you know, you go out there and work hard for each other and um, anything can happen if you do that. Um, but, yeah, like just to move on to the next game, sometimes it can be difficult, um, especially like when you go over to France. And I think it was COVID as well. So mm -hmm. a tough trip to go over there on a day in a semi semifinal. Um, I remember it was chaos over there, like the atmosphere, and we got to um, over there pretty early, so it wasn't the best build-up. Uh, we had our backs against the wall, but I still, yeah, we're still in the game for most of that game, I think. How have you found your trips to Catalan? Because you know Rovers haven't always enjoyed the best record over, and and you'll have seen through the various coaches, they've all approached it different ways in in terms of staying the night before, flying over on the game game day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How, how have you found it? Well, it's definitely tough. I think the flying in and out on the days um, makes it a really long day. But then, like I think last year, we went a few days um, beforehand and um, we didn't have the best game either. So, yeah, I guess you just got to find that balance, right? And um, I know we played, I think, Tony, we went over there one year the night before the game and we had a really good game. But I guess it's just, yeah, just the balance. But you can't really make it a, an excuse either. No, and, and, and obviously, you know, for them, they have to do it every yeah. other week as well. So there's something that they do which seems to work because Catalan are absolutely flying at the moment. Uh, recognition for you, Kane, that season as well, Super League Dream Team. Um, I mean, fantastic season for the Robins, but in particular, fantastic season for you. And and that move to the second row, almost vindicated by by just how well you was playing and, and the, the level of performance you was putting in week in, week out. Yeah, it was a good season um, for myself, but, you know, I'm always about the team first and, um, you know, the team had come a long way and I think uh, playing outside of Jordan Abdul really brought my game on. Um, I thought we worked really well together. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed playing outside of him and, um, yeah, it was a good season. I was, I was going to say, how how much easier does playing with a good player on the inside of you met your job? Yeah, it makes it all a difference, to be fair. Um, you know, if you're running, if you've got a, a half inside you who knows your game and, 
you know, he can square up and, you know, you got that trust in each other or like sometimes you won't call a play, but you know what he's thinking. So, you know, I think that's at the Cowboys as well. And we you know we had Jonathan Thurston on the left side and Gavin Cooper outside of him. I think them two worked really well together. So I think them combinations are, you know, they're a must. That's a good yeah. team. And it was during that season as well. We saw the, the holy uh, the holy grail of that left edge. Um, Sean Kenny Dowell, Ryan Hall, Kane Lynette. I mean, you've in, you three have enjoyed such a fantastic um, partnership almost between the three of you. Is, is, is that something you've specifically worked on? Because I'm guessing, of course, you'd work with your, your centres and your, and your wingers. But you three seem to have just gelled and, and you know, each season almost got better and better. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I, I think it's just, like I said before, it's a trust in each other. Um, you know, you play with someone for a long amount of time and you start to realise, like, you start to know what they do, their strengths and their weaknesses. And, um, you know, everything in rugby league, you need to trust the person next to you. If you don't trust them, like, yeah, you don't have much chance. So, but it was good to play with them boys, you know, experience left edge. But, um, you know, time, it's got to come to an end at some point. And, um, you know, I'm sure the next people who get in there, they'll do a good job for the Robins. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to say with with the with the patch that you've managed to build up with with Sean and, and then obviously you know Skidzy with Ryan Hall. How how much does it become where it's almost telepathic, where you just know he's going to be there, or or vice versa? He knows you're going to be on his inside shoulder. Um, and obviously you've played with him at at, uh, at the Roosters. I, how much does it become muscle memory where you just know that player is going to be there at that right moment? Yeah, I think pretty much, yeah, you know, yeah, hundred percent that they know who, where they're going to be there. Like, you don't even know he's going to be on your left. You can throw the ball and he'll get it and score a try. So, yeah, I think the best teams have got those combinations. Um, you know, you just look at Penrith in the NRL. You know, some of their combinations. Um, yeah. And how much time is spent on the the training pad, just working through them plays, and 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 almost. I mean, it must for for us as supporters, we just think it happens. It just automatically happens, but it must take hours and hours of work to to get to a point where where you are, just knowing that play is going to be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we work on the plays heaps, and um, it's the best when a you know you go out there and play a game, but you know you've worked hard on it over the previous weeks, and it comes off in a game. But I think it also having a strong like combination, it also puts doubt in the opposition's minds as well, mm. and also help. Yeah have more success. I was going to say, I mean, when you've got the opposition lining up against you, Skidzy and Ryan Hall, um, I mean, three phenomenal athletes, especially Ryan. I mean, he's somebody who's, who just just keeps going and going. It was interesting. He got asked whether, um, I think, I can't remember what game it was. I think he got asked whether he'd have one more season or one more pre-season. And he's, I think his response was one. Maybe, you know, he could keep going and going. I mean, he must be a freak in training. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah, he's, Bloody, the young kids can't even keep up to him in the gym. So, um, yeah, he's an absolute beast. Um, but, yeah, with him, I think he'll just keep playing until he can't know more. He just loves it. Yeah. I remember as well when we signed him, many people thought he'd, he hadn't had the best time in the NRL and thought maybe he was a bit of a spent force when he, he's, he's someone who's actually found a way to make his career even longer and, and, and adapt. And I suppose a bit like yourself, Kane, where... You know, you started your career in one position and you played one style of game, but you've learned to then adapt and change to to make yourself, you know, useful for the team and not only useful, but also then excel in your position. Um, is the as you've got older, is the little changes in your training re- regime yet that you've done or, or or found different ways, or have you just consistently bit done the same thing? No, definitely, like you said, you've got to adapt. Um, you know, you've got to adapt to your strengths. Um, and weaknesses and um you know if you want to have a long career um sometimes you have to you know obviously you're not as fast as you get older but you know you can you might be stronger in other areas so yeah like Hawley he's an absolute beast like um he's back of the field carries you know every game he puts his hand up and makes over 200 meters you know but he still scores tries as well but yeah like with the preparation and stuff like that I think I definitely had to do a lot more recovery towards the back end of my career like Whenever I had like days off, I'd be at the gym doing swimming and saunas and stretching. And, you know, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to get on the field, you know, consistently week in, week out. Yeah. I know a lot of uh, supporters have, assume, has, uh, have probably wrongly assumed that because of how uh, Holly's bulked up, that he'd be a, a natural to shift into the, to the second row. But he just, he don't fancy it one bit, does he? 
no, well, that's not his game, is it? He, he doesn't like doing tackles, so <laughs> happy to go out there and you know do the tough carries and score the tries. Well, that's it because he's not shaking work, is he? You see some of the hits he takes in in back plane and some of the meters he does make. So it's not because he's he don't want to get uh, don't want to get hit, but I can understand why he don't want to do the do some of the tackles. Um, twenty twenty one, of course, the Robins reach the uh, Super League playoff semi-finals and then expectations were high going into the following season, weren't they? I mean, as a team, you saw the heights that you could reach. What was the expectation for the, for the following season? Yeah, obviously we wanted to be a top four team. Um, you know, but like I said, we've had a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of injuries and stuff. I think you know, we've had a bit of like, unluck, like bad luck at the KR and it makes a massive, you know, difference to where you could end up. Yeah, and you saw your former cowboy teammate Cooty, he joined the, the side as well. It must be nice for you to link up with him as well. Yeah, it was. It was um yeah, good to catch up with him and you know, a few years later and um his family got along with mine really well. So um yeah, that made it good. Yeah, we saw um the Robins reach their second uh your second playoff, uh sorry, semi final with the Robins during that season, the Challenge Cup semi final, uh over in Leeds against Huddersfield Giants. Um you was Injured during that time, but you'd made a a semi miraculous recovery to get yourself out onto the pitch. Um, yeah. I mean, I must admit, when I saw you coming onto the pitch and you, your arm bandaged up, it was worse than Corbin Sims, I think. Uh, the the one he wears. I mean, how how did you get out onto the pitch, and how much was it your choice, and how much was it Tony's about getting you out there to play? Um, well, I went and seen the specialist. I think it was in the the start of the week that week, and um, he said I had to get surgery on it. Um, but he thought that I might have been able to, like, I couldn't do no more damage. It was already torn through. So I had to definitely get surgery on it. And I knew the semi final was that week. But um, yeah, he said I could, like, maybe go out and play if the pain wasn't too bad. And, you know, if it did completely snap, it was going to be the same recovery period anyway. So I had to talk to Tony and um, the training staff at KR. And um, we did a little bit of, like, contact stuff. And, like, I could feel it and I could still feel it was sore and that. But we thought I might have been able to get through the game. And, um, yeah, so we gave it a crack. Um, you know, it took a lot of pain medication and that to get out in the field. And, um, yeah, it was just – I made that tackle. I think it was on Theo Far, just stretched out, and then I felt it completely snap. And then it was just agony. I couldn't do anything. So, yeah, yeah, yeah tough. Yeah. Did it did it restrict your ability to, to play the game that probably you was used to playing and what you, what you wanted to play? Yeah. I, oh, I couldn't really, like, squeeze. I couldn't, like, grip onto – when I made a tackle, I couldn't squeeze. But then, like I said, once I made that tackle, I reached out and it completely went. Like I couldn't use that arm at all; it was completely gone. So I think oh, I tried to stay out there, but I was tackling with one arm and I had to get get off the field. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, you know, professional sports such fine margins. Um, worth, worth the risk of playing. We had a few boys. We were a pretty like patched up team. Like we had a few injuries. Jordan, I think he had a groin injury or something, and. Um, yeah, we didn't have much depth, so I think it was we had to really run the risk of trying to play, and obviously it's such a big game. But yeah, yeah, I think the I don't know if it felt it. There was a lot of frustration from supporters, and I'm guessing the players were frustrated as well because we'd been on a tremendous run prior to the semi final. I think we'd won seven, eight, nine games on the trot, whatever it was, and and you know confidence. You know, I know you, there was a few injuries, etc., but confidence was high, and ultimately, you know, you boys probably felt the same. Just didn't feel like you did justice to yourselves, the, 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 the performance, although there was factors of why the performance, what it was. And, and don't get me wrong, Huddersfield were terrifically disciplined. They, they played a fantastic game plan. But I don't know, we just didn't seem to get going during that game. No, nah, we didn't get going at all. I think I come off 10 minutes in and then Jordan, I think, come off. And it was just one of those games which you do get that, um, you know, for your career. Um, some games, nothing just works out. And um, Huddersfield, to be their credit, they're on that day. And, um, you know, yeah, it was just one of those days. Yeah, I was going to wonder because there was a fantastic following from from the whole KR fans. It was you know that there in the thousands. How do you sort of sometimes distance yourself from that disappointment? Because I'm, I, I I assume that you can become it can become all consuming, and if you take it all in, you know, it ultimately whether it's mentally affects you or. You know, going into the next game, you then become worried if you do something wrong. You know, it must be difficult sometimes to, 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 I don't know, almost block it out, but also then feel it enough to edge, you know, spare you on. Yeah, it is difficult. You've got to find that balance. Um, 
you know, I guess that's what some of the best coaches, um, they're good at moving on and, you know, thinking about the next game because the, the more you dwell on it, it's not going to help anyone. So uh, I think, yeah, ways I handle is probably just spending time with the family. You know, you come home to the kids and no matter if you've won or lost, they still love you and, you know, you still have plenty of fun with them. Yeah, definitely. And, and like we said, expectations were high going into that season. We saw the Robins featuring a Challenge Cup semi-final, but then we saw the departure of Tony Smith and Danny Mags taking over in the interim period. It, that must have been a, a strange time for the playing group. Yeah, it was very um, yeah strange and it all happened, I think, pretty quick. And um, I think because we were going so well, like leading up to that Challenge Cup and then it all come out and then, yeah, it was just a real dampener. Yeah, did you get any inkling that something was going to happen? Because I know you said it happened so fast, but could you see any any anything in the background going on that made you think you know there's something was uncertain? Oh yeah, I think there's a little bit of talk. Uh, obviously, like the media and stuff, um, you know, they get hold of everything. And yeah, there was a few little whispers and stuff getting around. So you know, if word gets around pretty quick. Yeah, I was going to say, and then the season sort of fell apart a little bit, didn't it? Towards the back end, we saw a horrendous run of injuries. I mean, have you ever seen a run of injuries like that at, at any of the sides you've been at previously? Uh, that's the most I've ever seen. And yeah, like you said, it just fell apart. Like when the coach is leaving and, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and stuff. Um, yeah. And then with injuries as well, it doesn't help. No, I was going to say, I mean, with the with the off-field stuff, how how... Protected are you as a group of players from that? Because obviously you've still got your jobs, you've still got your training to go do, and and um, but ultimately um, there's lots of variables within sport, isn't there, where um, it only takes something slightly to change, and it can affect the whole, you know, the whole everything that you're playing towards. Yeah, hundred percent. Especially when you're in, you know, at the elite level of professional sport, it doesn't take much to, you know, change the outcomes of games and stuff. So. Yeah, just those little things, they can have a massive effect. And, um, you know, I think that year probably definitely led to some of that. Yeah, I wonder with um, Tony departing as well, did did Skidzy sort of become a bit more prominent? Because obviously Magsy took on the, the coaching role and, and um, you know, did Skidzy become sort of step up a bit more or was he consistent throughout that time anyway? No, he was consistent throughout the whole time, I think. Um, yeah, Magsy come in and um, he did a really good job for us, I thought. Yeah, and then we finished the season on that uh, that Derby Day victory, which we uh, which we uh, spoke about previously. And then um, Willie Peters named the new Hull Kingston Rovers head coach. Um, I think he brought you guys in for pre season training. Uh, was it the earliest you've ever been been back? Um, and then put you through a tough pre season. Yeah, I think because I played in the World Cup, I come back a little bit later. But I know the other boys are in there really early and. Um, yeah, the boys were saying how hard they've been working. And, um, yeah, obviously when I got back, I could see that um, things had changed a lot for the good. Yeah, did you – was you out in Tenerife then with the – or was you back after that? No, I went to Tenerife, yeah. Went to yeah. Tenerife. So what – I mean, I think the boys are going back out again. Do you think that is the, – the work you do there, is that setting the foundation for, for, the, for the rest of the season? Because – the Robins probably this season, you know, you guys have looked the fittest I've ever seen a, a Rover side. Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, it wasn't just in Tenerife. Like, we did a lot of hard work before Tenerife. But um, and I think Willie brought a lot of the training from the NRL. Um, you know, we're definitely a lot fitter. Um, I remember some of the pre-seasons I did at the Cowboys. When, when, when we won the comp, we did like an army camp. And I think it does bring the squad together, you know, when you're doing that hard work together. And um I think, yeah, Tenerife was really good for us. And, um, you know, I know the boys are going there again in January. Yeah. Did they, did you know much about Willie before he came into the side? No, I didn't know much. Nah. No. no. Well, he, um, he's, he's hit the ground running in his first season. Um, and obviously, you've been a big part of that. I think this season, Kane, you've played the most games out of any season with the Robins. Um, and we talked about the time at the Cowboys, about how consistent you was. I mean, you must have enjoyed being able to play in so many games this season. Yeah, it was good. And obviously, when you're winning, um, it makes it a lot better. So, yeah, obviously, win a lot more games this year. And uh, I think the team we had was, um, you know, a really competitive team and there was no real weaknesses in our team, which maybe in the past we had, a, you know, we weren't probably the strongest team all over the park. But, yeah, this year you could just tell that everyone knew their job and, um, you know, each game that if you didn't play at a high standard, that there would be someone else to come in, which was really good to see that depth. Yeah, and we've seen, you know, all kinds of victories this season, hard-fought ones, 
Um, games where we've run away with a score line. There's been a bit of everything this season. We've seen golden point victories, golden point defeats. Um, early on in the season, we we uh, battered our cross city rivals, forty nil. That seemed like a game where literally everything just clicked. In any, any move that was tried, any plays that were made, just seemed to to just work for the Robins. Yeah, we, yeah, we won our game that day. Um, yeah, everything come off, and I just think we had such a strong team. Um, we had no injuries and. Um, I think Hull were struggling a bit with injuries and stuff. And, yeah, it's just one of those games where everything went right for us. And I've yeah. been on the receiving side of those games too, and it's not a good feeling. No, so, I was, was going to say, I wasn't going to bring them ones up, Kane. I was only going to talk about the, the good ones. But, yeah, remarkable victory. Um, and we enjoyed some really good victories during the course of the season. Of course, we beat St. Helens early on. Um, if you fast forward to the Challenge Cup, what a what a run that was. And that, that semi-final at Headingley, um, of course, Brad Schneider would come over. Um, he seemed to, everything he did seemed to just turn to gold, didn't it? Um, I remember his, his debut was uh, behind the sticks at, at Headingley when he slotted over the, the drop goal against Leeds. Um, and then to go and repeat that that feat against Wigan, and which was a, a really bruising encounter. And, and for you guys, of course, you had the uh, the late change with Mikey Lewis having to go to fullback, um, change around in personnel. At the time, was it was it Skidzy who who'd, who'd basically done it before Willie Peters had even come down to to make the change, or was that change always going to happen anyway in the event of of uh, the fullback being injured? Oh, with Mikey going back to fullback, yeah, yeah I think it was. Yeah, obviously Wacker had already been cup tied, so um, it would have been good to have Wacker at the back. He um, was really good for us. So I think the club did well to bring um, Snides in. Um, obviously, we had a few injuries and. Um, that's what the club I thought handled really well. Um, we brought in some good recruits and, um, you know, the, the season could have really fizzled out, but um, mm. we got some good players in and, um, you know, we really kicked on, which was good. Yeah, and you only have to see where, where Brad Snyder's gone to, to realise the calibre of the player as well. And, you know, I dare say in, in five years' time, you know, he, he could well be one of the one of the standout NRL players because he seems to have a little bit of everything, doesn't he? And, and he's, caught us, he's got the, the coolness to be able to slot over um, points at the big moments. Um, that yeah, exactly. Learn under um, Nathan Cleary and that as well. So, <laughs> fellow two snides. Um, you know he's a hard worker. He's got a good head on his shoulder, and um, yeah, hopefully, get, hopefully, he does really well over there. Yeah, I mean that that semi final, like we've already said, um, was a remar- remarkable performance for a number of reasons. Obviously, the weather conditions wasn't great. Um, Hull Kingston Rovers supporters there in huge numbers. It almost yeah. felt like. A home game. I don't know if that came across to the players. Yeah, definitely. And um, like you said, Wigan, they're always a tough game. And um, yeah, we it was a tough game that day. But um, I thought we played really well. Um, and obviously, to beat them, you've got to be at the top of your game. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the Challenge Cup final. Um, you know, we talk about expectations and, I dare say, um, going up against Lee. I mean, it's crazy, really, what Lee have done this season, isn't it? Because at the start of the season, not many people had tipped them to... Um, be where they are to finish in the playoffs to, to be a Challenge Cup finalist. Many people tipping them for, for relegation, but um, we've had some tough encounters against them this season. And, and the semi, uh, the final, um, another encounter where um, it went right down to the wire, a golden point defeat. Um, talk about that uh, Challenge Cup final, Kane, and what, what your memories are of it. Oh, I just remember like the build up through the week and um, to play out there, um, obviously, it was a special occasion. And um, I thought, you know, Lee, they were de- definitely there for the taking that day. Um, yeah, it's just obviously hard not getting the win. It would have been nice to win um, a trophy while I was over here. But, you know, that's rugby league, isn't it? Someone's got to lose. And, um, you know, it could have went either way. But, yeah. Yeah. I remember early on, um, Elliot Minchella and, and John Asiata. Um, having a bit of to do, was he much talk about? Because Asiata has been pulled up and or, or talked about about his tackling technique. Was it something that was spoke about by the players prior to the prior to the yeah. game? Yeah, we talked about it as our forwards had a, a bit of a meeting through the week, and we just said that you know if he flies in at anyone's legs, that we're all going to go in there, and you know we don't want to cop that. So I think it happened early in the game, and then yeah, we'll come running in. Yeah, I mean, it is a, it isn't a great tackle technique, is it? And, and it, you know, sometimes in sport, yeah, just because it's within the parameters of what you can do, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it. And, and you know, people are going to, let alone himself, people are going to get injured through that type of tackling technique. Would you would you like to see it get rid of? A hundred percent. I think, you know, someone 
yeah, I, I know like I know Johnny well. I played for him at the Cowboys and that, and yeah, he's not like a reckless player, but he's probably just done it for that long. Like it's like muscle memory, but yeah, I think something definitely has to change. Like because you know you get your knee blown out or whatever, and that could be a career. So yeah, yeah, I think it was hard, pretty harsh for Elliot to get penalised. You know, it wasn't much in it. So no, and and to be fair, there was during the course of the game, there was a lot of lots of things that didn't go our way. I mean, we talked about. The the forty nil victory over Hull, where everything just seemed to click, and and you saw what happened there. The Challenge Cup final, there just seemed to be lots of little things that just wasn't going our way. We saw the Tom Oppertick try uh, disallowed. I mean, I, I don't know whether now you look back at it and go agree with it, but for me, even now, I, I just I'm, I don't know. You scratch your head sometimes, don't you? How some of these, and that would have been a key try at a key time of the game as well, and and to go into the sheds, you know, it'd been. A huge try. What what was the players feeling on the on the pitch at the time? Oh yeah, definitely. It was frustrating. Um, that first half, you know, nothing went right. I think there was was it a penalty on half time or Mikey or something. There was just a few things, and it was just yeah, frustrating. I just felt like it wasn't going to happen for us that day. Like that first half, I was thinking everything's against us here. But um, you know, to the boys' credit, we hung in there, and um, the game could have went either way. It's fine margins, isn't it? In you know, professional sport, you know, those little cores, they're massive in a big game like that. Yeah, and, and to, to your credit, you, you found a way to get back into the game and, yeah. and Matty Partell's try pretty much epitomises everything about the Robins in, in 2023, about the hard work, never say die, keep within the game, keep trying, something will happen and, and something did happen. And, and at that point, did you guys really feel that you could go on and, and get the victory? Yeah, hundred percent. I thought, yeah, and then obviously the extra time. Like I felt like we were on top, we were on top, and then obviously that ball didn't go out, and then um, yeah, it was just those like the fine margin. Like we had that opportunity to win that game, and yeah, we let it slip. So you know, we can talk about all the ref calls and stuff, but you know, at the end, that there was a couple of things that we didn't get right, and you know, it cost us. Yeah, I mean, you talk about shoulda, woulda, coulda moments, and that that kick from Schneider. If that goes out, you know. Field position, we're in an attacking position. Yeah, also our like set of six leading up to that, like we just went one out. I don't know why, but we didn't throw nothing at them and we didn't have a really good attacking set. We didn't put ourselves in a good field position. So, yeah, we talked about it and, yeah. I, just, suppose, yeah. I was going to say, Ken, I suppose it's moments like that, though, where you know what your plan is, you know what you want to do, but on a big occasion like that, actually being able to do it is... is and when you've got the opposition as well trying to stop you... You know, it's not as easy as just execute your game plan, go do it, and we'll be fine. Because there's so many people stopping you trying to do it, let alone what's going on in your own heads as well. Yeah, exactly. Fatigue as well, like extra time. Obviously, being a big like build up and stuff like that. So yeah, it all adds to it. Yeah, I mean, it was a mammoth effort physically as well. You know, the 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 level of performance, the intensity. Um, you know, two teams literally going at it, hammer and tong. Um, how how were you guys physically? Because um, it seemed like both sides are starting to tire, especially in that in that golden point time. Yeah, obviously, yeah, you start to get tired. Um, and that's like you said, those little things that usually, you know, they're easy when you're under fatigue and, um, you know, it's, you can get sidetracked a bit. Yeah, many supporters, Kane, thought, do you know what? This could be the season now. It could tail off. You know, you put such a huge amount of effort into the Challenge Cup final and, and a huge credit to the playing group for the way that you was able to respond and turn that, that defeat around and, and put a, a fantastic run to ultimately end up with with you uh, in the playoffs and, and a playoff semi-final against Wigan. What happened after the Challenge Cup final to, 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 to almost put the Challenge Cup final defeat to bed? Did you use that to spare you on? Or did you sort of just forget about it and, and, and move on to, to the playoff campaign? No, we definitely talked about it to spur us on. You know, the season was either going to go one way or we either going to, you know, mope about it and, you know, think about the what-ifs and or we could go the other way and, um, you know, work hard. And, um, you know, we still had another trophy that we could uh, go and try and win. So, we, yeah, we had a good talk about it. And we had, I think, the Saints the week after where we were still pretty battered. But then, yeah, after that, we just really kicked on. And was it was it this time when you were starting to think about retirement, or had you already thought about it, or was it not even on your mind at that time? Um, oh, probably towards the last couple of months. I yeah, just started to think about it a little bit, and if I wanted to go around another year. Um, yeah, so it was kind of yeah, like it kind of was over a period of time. 
Yeah, because I know obviously Skidzy said he wanted to go go out on his terms and and go out when he wanted to go, rather than you know like we talked about with Cootie about being injured and he wanted to go when he he was ready. Was you starting to feel like that as well? Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, I think I've been like you said, I've been lucky to have a long career, and um, there comes a point where you've got to kind of think like, do I want to keep doing that hard training? You know, obviously getting on the field, you've got to take a lot of painkillers. Like towards the back end of like my career, like to play, like live, like taking anti-inflammatories and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I've got a beautiful family that I want to spend time with and, um, you know, obviously family back home as well. So I just felt like it was probably the right time. And, um, you know, I respect the club a lot and I didn't want to just, um, you know, play out another year and just take the money um, and, you know, not finish the way I want to finish as well. Like I wanted to finish still playing good footy and not just hanging on. So, yeah, I felt like I wanted to – my decision not – that to get taken away from you. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, like you said as well about your life after rugby league as well, you want to be living it in the best possible health as well. And part of that, I suppose, is, is making the brave decision to to go out when you want to rather than being forced out. Yeah, exactly. And I think like five years in the UK, it's like a loan and it's been a great time. But, you know, it's a, quite a long time as well. So, and I just looked at it like if I do another whole year here, like, um, yeah, what am I going to bring to the team? You know, I had to be honest with myself and I felt like I was probably starting to slip away from uh, my best footy and, yeah, that would have played on my mind a lot more. So I felt like it was the right time. Yeah, and the Robins suffered defeat after the Challenge Cup final to St. Helens, but then we put a winning run of four games together and then we finished in the playoffs and once again we'd be taking it on Lee uh, in, a, in, a, in a knockout game. Was he a bit of revenge there for the for the boys? Did did you did you feel like you owed them one after the Challenge Cup, or, or did you not even mention it? No, nah, we definitely definitely talked about it. Um, yeah, I think they were they once they finished the Challenge Cup, I think they kind of were slipping off a little bit. They weren't really well, and I just thought they were there for the take. And, and um, yeah, the boys, we just wanted to get one back on them, but obviously we got one back on them, but still doesn't bring a trophy. <laughs> No, and then you know it sets up a playoff semi final encounter against Wigan. Um, probably came another game frustration that you just wasn't the side wasn't able to put in a performance that that you knew you was capable of producing. But again, I wonder if Wigan used their semi final defeat as as motivation as well. And and let's not get it right. I mean, let's get it right. Wigan finished top of the the table. They're a very good side throughout the season. We had really challenging encounters with them. Um, that said, you boys just didn't really get going from, from the start, and th- which was frustrating, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was like a combination of a few things. Um, yeah, I just think that Wigan that day were on. Um, sometimes, you know, when you play them down there, they're just on their game and, yeah, we didn't get going at all. And, you know, they obviously wanted to probably get revenge on us. So it was definitely disappointing to fi- um, a game to finish the year off. Yeah, and of course we saw, I mean, I think it was because his radio comms weren't working, but seeing Willie Peters on the touchline as well, there just seemed to be lots of things during that game that you you as a playing group hadn't really done throughout the season and, and just lots of different, lots of little things that just didn't seem to go our way and, and some, you know, kicks going out in the fall, uh, missed tackles, et cetera, et cetera. It just, it just never really got going and, and, you know, although it had been a good season, you know, and, and one where many supporters probably hadn't expected, bearing in mind it was Willie Peters' first season in charge of, of the side. Um, as a playing group, did you feel like that was, again, one just that got away from you? Yeah, 100%. That wasn't the KR way. That wasn't the way we play. And like I said, to finish the year off like that, um, it was disappointing. But, you know, I look at that like, yeah, it definitely wasn't the, the KR way. When we play at our best football, like, we don't play like that. And, you know, we could beat anyone on the day. So, um, you know, I'm sure that they'll talk about that in the off season, and um, you know, hopefully use that for extra motivation and going into next year. Yeah, did you know that would be your final game then? Nah, didn't really know at all. Uh, I still hadn't made like obviously I'd been thinking about it, but um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of stay in the moment and then um, reassess after the year. Yeah, and it's um, it must have been a bit of an emotional changing room as well because obviously we had players. Players departing, players uh, retiring. Obviously, the highs and lows of the season: Challenge Cup final defeat, uh, playoff semi-final defeat, but also lots of highs as well. Um, and what struck me as well was there's tremendous unity and a bond with the supporters. Um, 
you know, and and, and that what that's what came across at the end of that game, just just as a as a club, almost how together things are at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that you know, obviously we lost the Challenge Cup final, and the last game wasn't the best performance. But if you look at the whole of the year, I think you know, and the amount how far the clubs come from. Um, you know, I think it's a massive step in the right direction, and you know, there's only good times to look forward to. Yeah, and you've been a, a huge part of that that build up to where we are now. You, you've been integral to the side. Um, I suppose at some point it's got to be rubber stamped with some silverware, which every team wants to do. Um, yeah. I wonder if it ramps up the pressure for next season now because the bar is set very high, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, but I think the you know, you look at the playing squad and, um, you know, there's a lot of good young kids coming through, um, you know, Willie and the coaching staff. I think, you know, they've got it all set for them now and, you know, we just need to take that next step to, you know, win something. Yeah, and when you look back at your time with Hawkinson, Rovers, Kane, who have been, who have been the players that have stood out to you? Um, well, obviously, Skidzy with his leadership, um, you know, he's been massive for the club and um, Mossy, when I was here with Mossy, you know, he was a big human, Um yeah, well, obviously I've had a lot of been lucky enough to be able to play alongside a lot of the boys, and you know I'm going to miss a lot of them. I uh, still have uh, friendships for life. Yeah, and you must have lots of fantastic memories of your time with the Robins. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think I looked at a YouTube. There was like a reel that someone made the other day, and I was like, far out. There was some good, good highlights on there. So um, you know, it's something that I'll look forward to showing my kids when they grow up. Yeah, definitely. But uh, Kane, you might have retired from professional rugby league, but you you're still going to continue playing down in down in Australia. Yeah, yeah. I was um yeah went home. I just got back from being over, back home and had a few things to sort out. And um yeah, this opportunity come up, and uh, you know I wasn't even really thinking about doing any coaching. And then um I was just going to play a bit of part time, and um you know they helped me get a good job at the port, and um and then he said that the coach has just uh, walked away or he's had a health issue, so. Um, yeah, the president there was like, would you want to do like some uh, coaching as well? And um, yeah, so it's something I jumped at and, you know, it's going to be a massive challenge for myself. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it and just looking forward to giving back to the community and, you know, some of those young North Queensland kids, um, you know, hopefully I can help them, um, you know, reach the NRL one day. Yeah, well, Kane, the same goes. Once Robin, always Robin, and that is very much the case for you. You'll always be welcome back in East Hull. Get you in that East Stand one day, so hopefully, um, although you're going back home, you know, you'll always be welcome, and we hope to see you at Craven Park soon. Thank you. Hopefully, I'll be back one day. Yeah, and we wish you and all your family a uh, uh, safe journey home and, and uh, a good life down under, because it's been an incredible pleasure to watch you play in the red and white of Hulkington Rovers, Kane. Honestly, one of the best players uh, to line up in the second row in the Super League era for Hulkingston Rovers and and uh, one of the best professionals that we've seen at the club. And, and you have played an integral part into getting the club to where it is now. And hopefully, uh, in seasons to come, we're going to start seeing some silverware. But you'll never be forgotten, Kane, because you've had a huge impact at the club. Thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. And yeah, it's been nothing but good times.